Hey yo guys, I'm Greg Glade here. Before we get into the video, I would like to give a huge shout out to all the uh, music uh, done in the video. It's done by a YouTuber named Snivies. I'll have his channel linked in the description below. It makes some of the best Pokemon remixes in the world. It doesn't have a lot of subscribers, so if you could show us some love, I'd be greatly appreciated. And we'll get on to the video. Yo, what's going on guys? I'm Greg Glade here. Welcome back to another video. Now today, we're going to be analyzing or doing a tier list for every VGC or for VGC uh, 2023, kind of the start of the seasons for series one. We're going to be analyzing every Pokemon and, you know, what tier do they fit into what mons are goaded and what mons are uh banati whatever that means uh this tier list was made by fide compo vgc so go check him out i will try to link his twitter down below he's a really really good italian uh, uh player um I, I think he's incredibly accomplished i mean just like he's putting the work he's putting the grind and he's doing well let's put it that way like he, he's he's really really good uh was able to win like a 500 player tournament recently um but yeah so this video is just going to be going over a tier list for not every single Pokemon listed here, just the meta relevant Pokemon. You know, Pokemon that are up at the top, like everyone uses them, and even some Pokemon that you don't see often, but they do actually have niches in the meta. I'm going to be kind of going over each of those Pokemon and kind of listing them based upon their strengths, you know, their weaknesses, you know, why are they used, um, you know, are they good with Terra, blah, 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 whatever. Uh, before I get into the video, smash the like button down below, subscribe, more content, obviously. Uh, I will be posting more when I get back home for winter break, but until then, this is the tier list that I'm going, uh, this is the video I'm going to be doing, um, and also another thing I wanted to mention is that, um, I think, like, so over these past two weeks, I've been playing a ton of VGC, I got to top 500 on, on, uh, showdown ladder, and I went 6-3 in the Limitless Tour and in the VR Tour, um, and in the Limitless Tour, so I got in the Limitless Tour, I got like 74th out of 480 players. In the VR Tour, I got 50, 50th um, out of like 460. So I feel like I'm decently qualified to kind of sit here and give you like a meta analysis. I um, mean, also for the Limitless Tour, I slept through the first two rounds, and I knew I, I, I knew I did. I just like didn't care to make cut. I just want to practice. So I played seven rounds. Out of those seven rounds, I went six and one. So like I have a pretty good grasp on the meta and like the trends that are happening so I just kind of want to go over them and like what Pokemon I think are really 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 good um so yeah but if we're going to be talking about the meta right now we cannot go without mentioning Murkrow holy shit this guy is good Murkrow is instant S tier like the premier Talon setter um because obviously you get t uh, you know you get prankster town prankster town is fucking amazing the issue with town fling is that like yeah you get a prankster town in turn one um but it's like if you take any bit of chip damage your tailwind is not prankster so that means like let's say you are in a situation where you have to set up tailwind again like mid game and your opponent has a murkrow and you have a talon flame and your town flame has already taken chip damage murkrow gets a priority tailwind and then they outspeed before a uh, town flame gets off tailwind so prankster tailwind is like so incredibly crucial in this meta just because for those interactions and also murkrow can deal pretty good damage with foul play into physical attackers and you have access to haze for pokemon like don dozo or another common pair that i've seen is running murkrow in golden go or murkrow and hydreigon and what you do is you just like drop a draco or make it rain and then you haze next turn uh just kind of get rid of the stat change and make it so you can still hit hard so this pokemon has like a lot of versatility and it's just really good as just a premier talent setter because of prankster in the meta okay, so Merco is s tier um and then we're gonna get the next tailwinder out of the way shout out to everglade galad shout out to everglade galad i agree i agree um the next tailwinder out of the way where the fuck is town flame at where's my boy at where is my boy I'm blind as fuck. Here we go. Alright, Townflame is the other Tailwind member, or other Tailwind user uh, for the metagame. It's pr pretty, it, it, it's extremely popular, but it's more like offensive. So like Murkrow, like Murkrow can fit on balanced teams pretty well as a Tailwind supporter, but Townflame is more built for like hyper offensive teams. So like when I used um, Townflame, I went for like a more hyper offensive team just because naturally it leans more towards that because you... Like, it's not as bulky as Murkrow. You're basically forced to run Sash. Your Tailwind isn't as consistent as Murkrow. But you do get, like, nice offensive stabs that honestly can do a lot of damage. Being able to one-shot uh, Golden Go with a Flare Blitz is absolutely incredible. As well as being a Tailwind setter, so you can't undermine this ability. Because if your opponent decides to lead, like, Murkrow, uh, Golden Go, and you just lead, like, Talonflame, you're instantly goaded. Um, what else? Talonflame is just, like, pretty good in general. I think it's a really good Pokemon. I think it's S-tier. Um, I would actually... 
I might put an A, like top of A, just because Murkrow does kind of outshine it in terms of like a talent center just by a little bit, but Talonflame still has like definite niches and like, okay, like th there are reasons why you would choose Talonflame over Murkrow. Uh, the next Pokemon we'll go over is, uh, we can't do any of the Paradox forms. Um, I'm just going to kind of go out of order here just by what I see. Oh, here we go. Uh, where is the guy that I was looking at? All right, here we go. Amoongus. I think Amoongus is... I'd say he's S tier. Um, so, like, Amoongus in past generations has always been really annoying with Spore. Um, just being able to, like... Just being able to basically put everything to sleep and being super bulky. Now, it has changed a bit this generation because, obviously, with Amoongus, like, you can... People can just, like, change their Terra type. So, you can have, like, Don Dondozo Terra into a Steel, so you can't Spore it. And you can't Clear Smog it. Or you could just tear into a grass type and completely avoid it. Um, like I did, I had a Terra, Terra Gyarados, Terra Grass Gyarados for the Limitless Tour that I was just able to use so I could completely block a uh, Spore from Amoongus and kind of shut it down. However, I think Amoongus is still really good because Rage Powder support is just incredibly good this generation. Um, just for being able to redirect attacks since you have like such huge hard hitting attackers, something like uh, Golden Go or um, I'm blanking, but it's just be able to redirect attacks, uh, leaving better like positioning for your uh part part of pokemon so it's like generally good there but then you can also terra uh, amoongus itself which actually terra amoongus is really good because like it's really good defensively because if your opponent just goes and you know let's say they want to just go for like a flare blitz or a uh, brave bird or like a flare blitz into your amoongus to knock you out then you can terra water and avoid the flare you know like basically take nothing from damage and then spore back to get a sleep and like well offensively it's not gonna be doing much with terra defensively that like that unexpected spore or that unexpected survival to a sp to do spore is like incredibly clutch now this meta is going to be open team sheet so it might not be as effective because then you'll know what terra type pokemon are but i still think amoongus is going to be pretty good um so like I think like keep a watch out for Moongus. I, I it, it doesn't fit on every team. It fits on more balanced centric teams. Like uh, I know currently the Victory Road tournament that happened this past weekend, I faced um, a Nails OU and he was using like an Amoongus balanced team, and I almost beat him. But Amoongus is just really good because you can just Terra, you can defensive Terra and then sleep stuff, which is what he did, and he, he did a really good job with it. So like it, it has potential to be really good. Uh, Pokemon from the top list here, like literally not many two Pokemon are viable. Gyarados is really interesting. I put Gyarados in like B tier, top of B. It might be leaning towards A, but I'm just gonna say B tier for now. Gyarados is like a premier os offensive threat. However, I don't know why. I just feel like it feels underwhelming in the current metagame just because like you, you have to set up a Dragon Dance to be like really, really effective. Intimidate users aren't that good. And if you're going to be using Intimidate, it's probably just gonna be like Arcanine or some shit. So like, Gyarados isn't that good, and you can go for like waterfall damage, I suppose. Dragon Dance is also very good. Um, you can like Dragon Dance Earthquake. I've seen Ice Fang to cover for like Guard Shop and some shit, which I think is really cool. I just think it, it's not seen on a whole ton of teams. Actually, if we go to like Victory Road, um, if you go to Victory Road and you go to the results here, I don't think Gyarados was seen honestly too terribly much. Um, like. Okay, no, Gyarados did get second, so Nick, or Nick Narave Nails, who I faced, he did have a Gyarados, but if you, like, if you look kind of throughout the, uh, the top cut, there's only a handful of Gyaradoses. I mean, Conan went 9-0 and with it, and Conan's a really good player, um, but, like, Gyarados shows up every now and again, and, like, that's why I think, like, Gyarados is, it's kind of, like, team-specific, it's not for every team, but I think, like, it's actually really good, because you're gonna intimidate user, you get a strong physical attacker, you get a immunity to Earthquake, and an immunity to Earthquake might not mean much when you're weak to Rock Side, but then you can intimidate something, um, it is a bit weak to, like, clear any other Guard Chomp, um, but if you set up a Dragon Dance, you have, like, Ice Fan or something, you're pretty much golden, and also Waterfall does a nice bit of damage. Gyarados is one of those Pokemon where it just kind of supports the team well, and you're not going to be picking up right- you're not going to be right- you're not going to be picking up knockouts straight off the bat, but, like, you're going to be doing a good amount of damage, and then you're going to be intimidating shit. So, like, it just kind of, like, it's just a well-rounded Pokemon, I would say. Next Pokemon I want to talk about is Tauros, Paldean form. I actually want to put this guy in B tier. A reason being is it's another Intimidate user, and Intimidate isn't, like, really good in the meta, but, like, it still has a place. Um, like, I think, who, who, who did it? There, it wasn't Joe UX9, it was maybe Neil VGC. Neil VGC did a really good video talking about how, like, in previous formats, like, in 20... 
2017, 2018, 2019, you would use an intimidate user mainly for the intimidate, but now that's not the case anymore. The top intimidate users are they have something else to them. Gyarados, you can Dragon Dance and Sweep. Tauros, you have Intimidate, but you also can just use a Life Orb, like Wave Crash, Life Orb, whatever, and do shit ton of damage. Um, so, like, Intimidate Pokemon no longer are primarily about the Intimidate. That's just kind of the side, like a side effect of running them, which I think is really interesting. It's a really interesting shift. When you look at something like 20, 2017 meta, when 2017 meta, Arcanine was just used because Arcanine's good, and you get off Intimidate into something like a Cartana, a Gigalith, or I don't really know what else. I'm kind of blanking on that. But like you, you, just, you just get Intimidate off into a lot of valuable Pokemon. But the reason why Arcanine is used now is not as much for Intimidating as for it's just an all-around solid Pokemon with like a good defensive typing well in like in past formats it was used because of that reason but also in addition to it got intimidate but because intimidate has been nerfed kind of heavily like like well you know it's not that good um but tauros is actually really interesting because it, it gets access to like it, it has good stabs it has good offensive typing so if you want to intimidate user that's pretty offensive taurus is there um do i think taurus is extreme taurus was not seen a whole lot no so but i think this pokemon could have definitely a place in the metagame um but it's it's gonna like fit onto niche teams i don't think it's gonna fit onto every single team possible all right move on and then these pokemon are extremely relevant vaporeon jolteon and flareon dragonite i'm going to put in b tier i don't think dragon is good i think dragonite has fallen off in the metagame but like it's dragonite still pretty good i think the only set that like is only that is viable nowadays is the um is the Terra Normal set, the Terra Normal E-Speed set. And I think that set's still pretty good, because like late game, Dragonite can just kind of come in, or like mid late game, Dragonite can come in and just pick up KOs. But you just don't see it a whole lot. You don't see it a whole lot anymore. And for that reason, I'm gonna put in like low-ish B tier. I just don't think it's as good as it once was. Another Pokemon I do want to talk about is Azumarill. Um, I'm gonna put Azumarill in C tier. Now, I don't think many people use Azumarill, but I use Azumarill, and I think like Azumarill, it's not the best. But I think it definitely helps patch certain matchups for teams, and for that reason, and it gets like access to like really good offensive stabs, like liquidation and play rough. So you have access to good offensive stabs. You can deal with dragons. You have like a, if you can, you can tear water to be like a really good defensive typing. So for that reason, like I think Azumarill can like I think it can hold its own in the metagame. I'm gonna put a place in the C tier. I don't think this mod is going to be extremely relevant at all, but I feel like a couple of players are going to utilize it to some success along the way. Um, nothing really stands out to me along this row. Uh, this row is interesting. Scizor, I'm gonna... I'm placing D tier. I think, like, Scizor has seen some use, but I just don't think it's that good of a Pokemon right now. Just because, like, okay, you have... You just have, like... It, mm, actually, uh, its offenses are just not... It's, they're not fit for this metagame. Like, it's just really not. You don't hit a lot of things at all. So, like... It, I feel like it's not worth running at all. I'm gonna keep it a buck fifty here. Like I, I don't think like Scissor is one of those Pokemon where it's fine, I suppose, but it's weakened like it's it's weakened to this meta, and you're using Scissor instead of something else. And you know you can tear a steel Pokemon and have it effectively be so much better than Scissor really is. So I, I don't I don't see it being good because like how does it beat Gyarados? How does it beat Orcanine? How does it beat Hydreigon? Because Hydreigon can tear a fire and then fuck you up and. Okay, what well, you can like Terra Water, but then you're still taking a lot of damage from Dark Pulse. Like, th there's no reason to use this guy. Not no reason, but like, not many people are gonna use it. Uh, Flamigo is kind of interesting, um, because like F Flamigo at first, people a lot of people were spamming it on ladder with like Don Dozo strats, and like I thought it was pretty good just because like okay, you leave Tessigiri Don Don Bozo once Tessigiri dies or whatever, you can switch out Tessigiri or once. I forget how it works. No, no, once Don Dozo get the, gets the boost, you can, like, switch in, um, Flamigo, and then, like, use Co-Star to get the, to, uh, transfer the boost over, which, to copy the boost, so I think it was really cool, but you just, I think it's, like, too gimmicky to pull off, and you would also, you would want to have, like, other Pokemon instead of this guy, um, for the slot, so I think Don Dozo is just better on its own, to be honest, like, I don't, I don't think you should use Flamigo, I'm gonna put it in D tier, just cause, like, I feel like it could see some use, but, like, I don't expect it to, uh, other Pokemon from this uh, row. Pelipper is actually interesting. I'm going to put Pelipper in C tier. 
reason being is i think like while pelper isn't extremely good now there are a couple players in the vr tour that use like pelper rain teams to like some success and actually cut and i think like in the future we could definitely see like rain centric teams so you can run like Pelipper, what's the new water po Pelipper Palafin or like Pelipper Barascuta. I feel like Pelipper Barascuta with the addition of Terra, so you can just demolish everything. You can uh, use Propella Tail to, you know, not be affected by like Follow Me and Rage Powder. Like that shit could actually be good. You could like side tech Pelipper Barascuta onto a team and like patch weaknesses and just have like a really offensive uh, dual pairing. Uh, other than that, Pelipper, like you. It has access to Y guard, which I think is really good. Like you can't uh, you can't forget that it has access to Y guard, and if a Pokemon has access to Y guard, it can actually have a niche in the metagame. And because there are many times when people are just going to use spread moves like Rock Slide, uh, make it rain, and having Pelipper as a Tailwind Pokemon, you can set up Tailwind and then have it be defensive, so you can use Y guards, so you can protect yourself. Like it, it can establish a niche for itself. And I think rain teams are going to see a bit of play. I don't think they're going to be meta. I think they're going to be rogue, but they will show up occasionally, and I think they will be pretty good, and they can cut some events. Other than that, Breloom, uh, I'm going to put Breloom in D tier. I actually thought Breloom had a niche for a while, but then it really didn't, I'm not going to lie. Like, I really thought this mom was something. Like, at first when I was looking into, like, Dondozo counters, I thought Breloom would be really cool, because, like, okay, you have Sash, you can use Sash, you can Spore, then you can hit him with a uh, Technician Bullet Seed, or if they Terra Steel, you can just use Super Power, like, or Drain Punch, the, like, the, the, um, the potential is there for Breloom to just be a good Dondozo counter, and it's also a really fast Spore, so, like, it's the fastest Spore in the game, so it, it could be good, but then, it, n no one just uses it, and, but I still think there's gonna be, like, one or two people that are gonna take this mod to the top, so I'll give it the D slot. I'll give it the D slot. Why not? Uh, what else we have? Torkoal. Um, hmm. I don't know how I feel about Torkoal. A tier seems a bit high right now. I'm gonna put him in like. I'll put him like right here. I'll put him like high B tier because like Trick Room teams are still pretty good. Like if, if you can use Trick Room, you can use it well and get get your turns effectiveness. I mean, using Terrifier Eruption is still really good. But I think a lot of people have adapted to. Uh, trick room teams and they aren't as relevant anymore but i still think like torkoal seems really 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 good still and i think like if you don't have a torkoal matchup then you will probably just lose so i think it's still something you have to account for um because having like, facing a team like indeedy armor rouge hariyama torkoal is still incredibly threatening just because like under trick room if you're not ko'd by an eruption a uh, terrifier eruption you're probably going to be ko'd by something like a hariyama so you know, if your opponent does get up Trick Room, trying to find a way to stall to stall Trick Room out can be a little bit a little bit tricky. Or trying to just live through the Trick Room can be tricky. And a lot of teams or a lot of teams now are more hyper offensive. Um, they're more hyper offensive, but they can easily take on Trick Room because they have like strategies like um, Trick Room Meow Scarda, um, like make it rain shit. I mean, they they can avoid the Trick Room pretty well. Um, but if you, if they, if the Trick Room user does go to Trick Room, Torkoal can just go to town on Pokemon, basically. Uh, what others do we have? Sableye, no, 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 Bayonet. Mence is not, you don't see Mence. Uh, I'm going to give Mence D tier, because it is a Tailwind mine, it's an Intimidator, so, like, it, it can carve out the same niche. It can carve out, like, a, a little bit of a niche, but I don't think it'll be that good. Um, also, if you're going to be using, I'd use, like, Special, but that's the thing, it gets good coverage, so you can, it can kind of be, like, the Nido King. Talon setter where like you set Talon, but then you also have like insane coverage to like one shot stuff. I'm pretty sure Salmons gets Ice Beam. I'm not gonna cap Salamence. I think it's Ice Beam, honestly, because like, you can run. Okay, it doesn't get Ice Beam, but you can run like Draco. You can run Draco Meteor, and then if you like want to deal damage to something like an Amoongus or something, you can run Hurricane, you can run Flamethrower, you can run Hydro Pump if you want, so let's say you're putting at least an Arcanine, you can just like, alright, I'm gonna Hydro Pump it, like, it has the potential, but I don't think it's gonna be that good, uh, what else do we have, um, Staraptor, I'm gonna play Staraptor in like, B tier, okay, so this is Obsection Bias, um, but I've been using Staraptor, and I, I think it's like, really fucking good, uh, using a Choice Band Staraptor, with like, Brave Bird double edge with Reckless, you just like one shot everything in the metagame. Like if you have a defensive chomp, it still one shots it. 
um and it has like star raptor has the chance to kind of be whatever set it wants like you could run literally you can run star raptor as a talent mod if you wanted you could run it as a choice scarf final gambit pokemon kind of like annihilate you could run it as a choice band mon just to launch everything in the metagame it's just like one of those pokemon that's more geared towards just hyper offensive teams and just going 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 and just absolutely destroying so like i know i think it was round seven in the vr tour i faced um guillermo tarmo guillermo torrio if i'm pronouncing his name right but basically he's the best player in great britain and i just let the raptor and i made one prediction on a protect and it was just game it was just game i 4 0 him that's the power of the raptor like if you lead an offensive Raptor and you get the ball going, it's incredibly hard to stop just because of how much offensive moment or how much like offense it brings to the metagame. So like I think Raptor can carve a niche in that aspect, but I don't think it's overall a really, really good mod. It's definitely more of a rogue Pokemon that has a lot of flaws to it. Um, but if you can utilize its strengths right, it'll be really good. Uh, what else do we have? Nothing really good in this row. Gastrodon um, is like, do we even see Gastrodon? I don't know. I'll put Gastrodon in D tier. Uh, I'll put it in like high D tier. I, th I don't think it like, dude. I really don't think Gastrodon should be in D tier. I'm not gonna cat like, it shouldn't be. Gastrodon really should not be in D tier. I'm not gonna cat. Yeah. So like, <laughs> the choice is yours. Cool. Um, but like, Gastron, like, it doesn't see play, I don't think. But, like, here, you, okay, so here's the Pelper I was talking about. Okay, there's Pelper, Pelper Palathan. Uh, where's the other Pelper shit? Because I know there's other Pelper uh, teams. Uh, yeah, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. So, this was Diamond More Than Five. You see Pelper Dreadnought. I think it's pretty cool. Uh, Pelper Palathan here. Pelper Palathan. So, and here's a Mens. You know what I'm saying? So, like, you can see it'll be this Pokemon. Here we go. Here's a couple of Azus. People are picking up on Azu and how Azu is actually kind of good. And Gastrodon is being used like Pelper, um, just Pelper, Pelper Palafin. So you can see there's a lot of like, um, what you can call it. There's a lot of like, okay, Pelper Palafin, like I said earlier. I didn't even realize that people use that. And I think Gastrodon actually can carve a niche, just being like more defensive Pokemon. I think it deserves to be higher than Salamence. I think it could be like low C tier. I don't think it's too bad of a mon. Um, what else do we have? Yeah, nothing's really good here, Hanscar. No, no, no. All right, Chomp. Let's talk about Chomp. Chomp is not S tier, but it is like high A tier. This mod is incredibly good because like you, you have access to Rock Slide. You're, you're bulky. You're fast. You have fast. Ha you have access to fast EQs that pretty much outspeeds a lot of the metagame. Um, you have access to Dragon Claw if you want to deal with opposing Garchomp or opposing Hydrag Hydreigon. Um, you have like you have an incredibly good terror typing because you can just hit stuff incredibly hard and you're going to be paired with like a murkrow so you can like guard shot murkrow you can like tear tear ground earthquake and then tailwind uh, there's a lot of good combinations you can lead with it it's going to be faster it's also really good because it's a really good check to golden go um because you're going to be faster than golden go and you can just go for like a terror ground earthquake or like a stop a tantrum to pick up the knockout um because you will you will probably move before golden go because golden go doesn't really run scarf normally um, so that's another thing that I like about uh, Garchomp, and also if you want like a more often to say you can go SD, but you also have access to stuff like Rough Skin. Rough Skin's really good because you know let's say they lead me out um, and you can like break their sash, and depending on how offensive you are, or if you have another Pokemon in the field, you can KO me out back. And so Rough Skin can break sashes. Rough Skin can just chip things down. It has like it just has really good versatility. It's nothing. It's like one Pokemon that like it doesn't excel in anything too strongly it's just kind of overall more balanced which sounds weird because Garchomp is like known to be an offensive pokemon but it's more like it seems more balanced kind of in this metagame because you're just using rock slash you're just using dragon claws you're not going for like spec shadow balls you're not going for specs make it rain you're not going for like choice banded uh, double edges you're not doing any shit like that but it's, it's more like overall consistently good damage being well being able to back it up with bulk and a good typing um being able to pair well with like a tailwind user as well so garchomp like can sit up there in a tier honestly um i don't know like who i want to touch on uh these guys rotom mo i think is i'm gonna put him like f tier i don't think like is that good rotom heat i'm gonna put heat in like c tier i think rotom Heat can find a niche like gastrodon will at some point because like okay if you look here rotom i swear i got i saw a rotom um heat okay here we go yeah yeah Ro eugene used uh or ug used rotom heat here and rotom heat like i think it can be good i just think like it's not the best right now in the meta but like 
I'm sure it can be good. Like two people use it. So we go road time heat, road time heat. Like it has use. I just don't think it's too good. I think like there are a lot of Pokemon that are better than it. I don't exactly know what. It's just I haven't tested with this Pokemon a lot, but I it just doesn't seem the best into the meta right now. But like it's for specific matchups, and I I agree with it for specific matchups. Road time heat. I'm gonna road time wash. I'm gonna put in like semi low a mid-range B tier because I never found Rotom Wash to be an excellent Pokemon. It all, Rotom Wash for me, like I used it, I was able to use it well back in 2020. I was able to understand its role and be able to utilize it well. In this meta, I, for whatever reason, Rotom Wash just never feels that good to me. And when I face it, it never feels extremely good, but it always feels like good. So it's just kind of like, it, it has good bulk has a nice dual stab because you can hit stuff like Arcanine you can hit you hit a lot of things neutral and you have the bulk to back it up you can spread a will-o-wisp if you want to be very annoying to cripple physical attackers or if you expect your opponent to play more defensive or if you have like a follow me support user you can click an as you plot and then be an actual real offensive threat a lot of things you can do you can run a lot of berries you can run rindo berry if you want you can run citrus berry for the more added bulk like real time wash has a lot of options i just it, it's kind of like Garchomp, but to a lesser extent, where Garchomp doesn't excel at anything too much, but Rotom's just kind of like an all-around balance, I would say. And well, versus Rotom, Heat is more like patching up certain matchups. Rotom Watch is just more of a general blanket. I can kind of stick this guy on most teams and have it kind of feel like a decently well-balanced Mon. Um, so I don't mind it. I think it's cool. Uh, Lilligan, uh, I'm just gonna put like Lilligan in D tier. I think like if you're low ladder and you use like Lilligan Cole, you can have some success. But I don't think this mod is gonna be that good at high play because I know people will know how to play around it. But still, like you, Lilligan will never be bad when Torkoal's around. So like I still have to put Lilligan in the tier list because I, there's going to be somebody that's going to use Lilligan Cole and do well with it. Uh, other guys here. Not really anything too good. Zoroark, Gothitelle. I'm going to put Gothitelle in like D tier. I think Gothitelle can be good for some teams. I know, um, actually, Nick Narave had uh, Gothitelle, didn't he? Um, yeah, here we go. So, Gothitelle was actually pretty annoying on this team. Um, it actually... I didn't play uh, well against him game two. And his Gothitelle was able to just trap me in. He was able to spread spores, spread Will-O-Wisp. And be able to be really annoying with King Nambit. So, like, I think Gothitelle actually, instead of being B, I'm going to put it in like... I'm going to put it in, like, high B. I think it actually... Mm, I think it's overall going to be more consistent than Torkoal. Because here's the thing. People that are good are going to be able to play around Torkoal. People that are good are going to be able to play... Yeah, people that are good are going to be able, be able to play around Torkoal. However, Gothitelle is just more of an annoying Pokemon to deal with. It actually works really well in this meta. I um, mean, my team specifically, you know, like I said, like I mentioned, you know, they could lead Gothitelle. I think he led Gothitelle Arcanine. Um, yeah, actually, let me check my notes. Because I know for a fact, um, so here we go. Game two, he led, okay. So game two, he brought Arcanine and Amoongus as the lead, uh, but then had Gotha, Toki, Nambit in the back. So basically what that allowed him to do, Arcanine and Amoongus is a really passive lead, can cover for basically every option on my team pretty effectively. Uh, but then in the back, he had Gotha, Tell. So at any point he could switch Gotha, Tell in, whether he had Arcanine or Amoongus on the field. And if he had Amoongus, you can just go for fake out spread spores. And because my team was more offensive and I don't have a lot of protects, I wasn't able to play around it exactly well. And if he switches and Gotha, Tell with Arcanine, same reason, he can just kind of will with stuff or start stall me down. I don't have much uh, plays. Or if he has Gothitelle Tell Kinambit in, and I don't have a good matchup into Kinambit, Kinambit can set up a sword stance, and if I want to hit it with anything in the bank, he can just go for a sucker punch, and at that point, maybe knock me out if I was chipped down. So, Gothitelle has the potential to support the team extremely well, and so there's a reason why he won the tournament. I think Gothitelle was a really, really good medical. Actually, you can see first place also had a Gothitelle. Um, which is actually really cool because, you know, a lot of people are going to lead positive into, like, a Tetsugiri Dodonzo. Excuse me, Donbozo. So, like, having got the tell there can be really good because you can kind of predict, like, certain leads and just be in favor. I don't think many other people use got the tell. In fact, but I think you are going to start seeing Gothitelle, not because it specifically won this tournament and not like specifically on these teams, but you're going to see actually more just in general for how well it supports other Pokemon in this metagame. Um, were there actually any other Gothitelle that made it? I'm not really seeing any. 
No, that's really surprising. So the only two Gothitelle and Cut got first and second. That really says something uh, that they were able to make a meta call like that. I think that's really neat. Um, yeah, I think Gothitelle can be really good. I'm not going to put it in A tier just yet, but I think it definitely has A tier potential. But Gothitelle is more team dependent. I think Gothitelle is going to be like high B range for me. Um, what else? What else? What else? Nothing really there. Alamola, no Hactress, no. Hydreigon. Hydreigon is easily. Hmm. I'm gonna put a Hydreigon on S tier. I think Hydreigon is better than Garchomp, specifically because Hydreigon can use Terra typing better than Garchomp can, I think. Because, like, Hydreigon, you have access to Terra Steel, okay? That makes you so much more defensive, because then you're weak to Fairy before, okay? You were weak to Dragon before, but now you're Steel type, so you can take that on, okay? But then you can Terra Fire, so. What's Terra Fire against? Oh, so Terra Fire is like for Abungus, or for um, Golden Go. So if Golden Go Terra steals and you just Terra Fire, you can do a lot of damage to them, right? And you can take their hits well. So you have multiple options with Hydreigon. Um, oh, uh, Terra, Terra Fire, or Terra Steel is also for like Sylveon. So Hydreigon's like Terra types are really more defensive because like you are you commonly see Terra Steel, Terra Fire, and Terra Poison. But Hydreigon is one of those Pokemon that just util utilizes Terra so effectively well. It can al always just hit hard because dragons are really prominent in the metagame like Garchomp and Hydreigon just being able to go for a Draco Meteor and KO both is really good, and then you can use Dark Pulse, but nothing really in the metagame resists Dark Pulse too much, or wants to take it, so you're already getting good chip damage off, and then you can use a coverage move, you can use your Terra Blast if you want, you can use Heat Wave, you can use, no, what you would call it, I don't fucking know, Flash Cannon, like, it has so much potential for just pure damage output, um, it just hits so many things hard in the metagame, it's great paired, I think you often see the, um, you, you see like Tailwind Double Dragon. Tailwind Double Dragon is good. Garchomp and Hydreigon are just a really good combination for being really offensive and just good because they actually have pretty good defensive typings um, and really good offense, offensive typings as well. You stop a Tailwind on, you're, you're, you're going to be set. You're going to be goaded, basically. That, that's that's the gist of the team. Um, what else do we have? Volcarona. I'm going to put in... I saw like one Volcarona. I'm, I'm not going to rank that guy yet, but I think he could have a niche. Sylveon, uh, Sylveon really fell off, but I still think it's good. I'm gonna put in, like, I'm gonna put it, like, right here. I think Sylveon's good. Like, it, it definitely fell off, though, because you, where's the first Sylveon at? So, the first Sylveon is number 18, but it went 8 and 1. So, Sylveon's still good, I think, just because, like, you know, Pixely Fairy is really good. I mean, obviously, because our, the meta is like semi fairy weak, um, so Pixely Fairy is really good. Um, and you could say, well, you can just Terra type around it, which it is true, you can Terra type around it, but that means you also are tearing and using your Terra or like having to waste Terra to specifically deal with Sylveon is getting rid of valuable resources. Um, so Sylveon's just really good because. You're kind of forcing your opponent to terror if they have like a guard jump or high dragon or they're going to be KO'd and you can run enough bulk for this thing to live like an earthquake like a or a uh, terra ground earthquake and you're going to be hitting really hard back you can run if your opponent leads more defensive you can run a substitute sylveon a lot of arcanine now are running heat waves so they're not doing too much damage so honestly you could set up a substitute then start calm minding and just doing consistently good damage you could be a leftover set you could be a throat spray set if you wanted you could be hell if you want to be um whatchamacallit what's the steel berry i forget the steel berry uh it's not cassib bro i'm blanking so hard babiri if you want to be babiri berry you can be babiri berry to counter to like something like the dragons it has just a lot of potential but i think it's definitely fallen off in the metagame as more hyper offense has fallen into favor rather than more balance centric teams because i think balance has fallen off just a little bit personally um next we have what you can call it uh none of these pokemon are really that good mudsdale you did see it like eight being used once or twice and i love Mudsdale. was mudsdale is one of my favorite pokemon so i might fuck around with it just a little bit um just to see kind of what it's like uh but i'm not going to tear it for now because it's not actually meta relevant um Ranguru, not really meta relevant right now. Mimikyu, mm, you don't really see it. Corviknight, I'm actually going to tier. Corviknight, I think, is like... It's really right in here with these guys. Okay, so back in like early 2020, going to like Oceana. 
Oceania International Championships. Corv Knight Gastro and Rotom Heat was a really good solid like defensive core that like it was a little it was kind of hard to break and just had a lot of options and so that's kind of why I feel like these three Pokemon accelerate at Corv Knight uh, Gastro and Rotom are more defensive options that just kind of like they're hard to handle so I think Corviknight's the same way I don't think Corviknight is meta breaking meta defining but I think given the right team it, and giving the right tools, it can be really, really hard to take down. And of course, Corviknight's one of those Pokemon where you play to an endgame into which your Pokemon or your opponent doesn't have any Corviknight counters, and then Corviknight's good. It's kind of like Shininja in a way, because a lot of Pokemon can't really touch Corviknight um, if just left alone. And Corviknight can then just like bulk up all over them, Iron Head, do whatever it wants to do, right? So that's the idea behind Corviknight. And I think Corviknight can be good, because it, it was seen on uh, a couple, a couple of teams, I think. Maybe one or two teams from this top cut use Corviknight. I don't think it was too many though. Now I'm looking at it. Also, uh, uh, Wanma, he did use Oranguru, and I think Oranguru is a good Trick Room setter. And there's a Mimikyu. Um, but I'm not going to tier them because they seem just a bit too niche right now. I know there was a Corviknight. Here we go. So Oppo. Oppo's a really, really good player. He was able to use Corviknight pretty effectively. Um... It just seems like one of those Pokemon that you support it well. You have a right team for it. Corviknight. Oh. I love Corviknight with screens. Corviknight with screens seems really cool. Uh, were there any other Corviknights? Uh, he might have been the only Corviknight player in Cut, actually. Uh, was he actually the only Corviknight player in Cut? Oh, no, there was another one. Here we go. Oh, so this is what I said. So I said that Rotom, Gastrodon, Corviknight seemed like a really good pairing. And actually, this team... Uh, Danielle's team seems very similar, very similar to, um, I think it was, it was a senior division uh, world champion, no, it was master's division for Oceania International Championships in 2020, the Gastrodon, the Rotom, and the Corvid Knights, it's just a really good defensive core, and then Garchomp, you could run, our Tyrantar also pairs really well with, like, Corvid Knight, and Tyrantar pairs well with Garchomp, because Garchomp might have been Sandvale, just an overall pretty solid team with a nice synergy, um, not really too much going on here. Like, yes, did Drenal do well in, like, for one team? Yeah, but it's not meta-defining. Meta Bear Scuda, I think, in the future is going to be pretty good. Toxtricity can cover niche. Hattering, you don't see much. Grimmsnarl is interesting. Um. Hmm. I'm going to put this Pokemon behind Rotom Wash, but in front of Sylveon. I mean, this isn't exactly in order, but, like, I semi-keep it in order in terms of, like, I think Gyarados is better than Tauros. I think Sylveon is better than Dragonite. I think Grimmsnarl is better than Sylveon. But this isn't like exact. This isn't an exact tier list uh, in like from best to worst. So I think Grimmsnarl is good just because screens like screens are generally better for balanced teams. Obviously, you can see here like. Oh wait, that's not the team that screens. This team though, you have um. You can screen to support something like an Annihilate, an Azumarill, a Hydreigon, just to make stuff like generally killable. I think screens are always going to be good just because you obviously can increase your defenses for the team. You're not going to be seeing screens on more offensive teams. Um, that's just how it goes. You're going to be seeing them on more balanced set of teams. Now, balanced teams can still have an offensive Pokemon. They can still have Tailwind, but they're obviously going to have support Pokemon like that Rotom Wash, like the Amoongus. It's those kind of more balanced teams that Grimstone caters to. And I think it's still good, but it definitely has fallen off. I know a week ago, a week and a half ago, everyone used to use Grimstone because the meta was a lot more balanced centric. And now the meta has shifted towards offensive. Grimstone has fallen off just because Grimstone doesn't really exactly mix well with hyper offense teams. Because obviously hyper offense, you just want to go, go, go rather than setting up screens and, you know, having a more, having a more controlled pace of the game, I suppose. All right, what else do we have? Um, Indeedy. Okay, here we go. Indeedy is a tier. Mm, this is tough. This is tough. I don't know where I want where I want to put Indeedy. I'd say a tier maybe. Hmm. I'd yeah. I'd say I'd say it's a low a tier. Number one, one of the best redirectors, if not the best redirector in the format, can pair really well with Armor Rouge, so you can go for, like, Expanding Force, you can just follow me, Armor Rouge can set up Trick Room, and because of a certain glitch in Scarlet and Violet, Indeedy actually, Indeedy Female actually gets Trick Room now, so you can run Indeedy Female with Trick Room. So, 
you know, this thing used to just be, okay, you follow me, you use helping hand, but now it can be its own trick room stutter if need be, which is kind of fucking broken because you can, basically why people ran NDD mail was because it had trick room and you could use like trick room in prison. Um, but now you can just take trick room from a DD mail and put that on female. Like it is broken. Like I think, I think it's, I think it's going to be explored more, but I think it's going to be explored more. Um, it's not seen a whole lot in cut, but I think it will be explored a bit more. There's indeed female and indeed female on top four. So indeed he made top four. I think it's pretty good. I think, yeah, pair with armors. It's good. And you don't need to run it with trick. Room. You honestly don't need to. It's because like, it's still a really good follow up remount, but you can run it with trick room for it to be really good. It also just pairs really well with hyper offense armors teams. Um, Dragon Pulse interesting. Um, I'm going to put Dragon Pulse in like... I don't think it's as good as Rotom, but I'm going to put it in like mid B range because when you get access to screens and screens are really good, or I would say screens can be good in this metagame, but also you can use like Terra Dragon and you can go for Dragon Darts. And I don't think this thing's going to pick up any direct knockouts, but as we've seen in VG 2020, or, or Dragon Ball just has the ability to do a lot more damage than you would initially expect. And obviously with Terra, that's damage is going to be boosted. Imagine using a Choice Band, Terra Dragon, Dragon Darts. I mean, that could do like 65% to a uh, non-resisted Pokemon. Like, it's gonna hurt. I think he can definitely have a niche. I know it wasn't seen on many teams. Um, in fact, I don't know where we actually saw a Dragapult. If at all, actually. Which is kind of funny, because you would think Dragapult would maybe see a little bit of appearances. But I'm still going to place it as such, just because I think it is still a pretty good Pokemon. Okay. Um, Armourage. Armourage is pretty good. Um, I'm going to place Armourage in A tier. Just because, like, I think Armourage has what it takes. Like, it's just a really good hyper offensive Pokemon that you need to account for. I'd say it's A tier, but it's, like, low A tier. Like, it's not better than Garchomp or Talonflame. That, 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 that just stands for me. I don't think it's better than Garchomp or Talonflame, but I think, number one, it's a Trick Room setter. But it's a Trick Room setter that hits, like, a Wall Breaker. Which having that combination is amazing because like in with pair with Indeedy where it also gets Trick Room but you also have Redirection and you can still like you can go for Helping Hand, dude. You can like honestly I've seen Armor just one shot a bunch of shit and you don't normally see that for a Trick Room setter or if you do, it's gonna be something like Hatterene. But Hatterene, like in order to one shot with Hatterene you have to G Max, right? Armor is not the case. You don't have to. Well, you don't have G-Max anymore, but you don't have to Terra. You can just smack things and hit them really hard. Um, I think it's a really good Pokemon. Alright, what else do we have? Um, also, it can be fit on Trick Room-centric teams, or it can just be fit on, like, Hyper Offensive, or the mix of both, and they're still pretty good. Uh, we don't have too much more to cover, I don't think. That are, like, super meta-relevant. Uh, Stellar Rouge is also in a tier just specifically because it has a really good offensive typing and it act gets access to bulk up and bulk up with terra is really good because you like you're boosting your you're boosting your offense and you're boosting your defense and you can change your type to be defensive so that people often go like grass type so you can resist like water type moves and then you can use bitter blade bitter blade to recover the health back and cellar root like it doesn't have the best bulk but it, like its bulk is like you'll live a hit type of bulk. It's not too frail to a point where it'll drop to any hit. Like, you'll live most hits, but then you can just recover that back with Bitter Blade and then maybe potentially live another one. Or, because you have bulk up, you can more comfortably live a hit, but then you might be in range for a knockout next from the same hit, but then you Bitter Blade and you recover that health back and then you're out of range. It is, like, just really good. It's, like, it's really good on balance. Not balance, but, like, balance hyper-offensive type teams. Not solely hyper-offensive, Although it still can be pretty good on hyper offensive. I like it more on like balance centric ish teams. Uh, where is Cell Ridge being? Um, Cell Ridge placed. Oh, here we go. Nova. So th this is what I mean. Like, it, this seems more like balance oriented, but you still have something like a Garchomp, a King Nambit, a Rotom. I think Cell Ridge is like better on those kind of teams. I like the more balanced teams with Cell Ridge. Also, did I just see Reuniclus or am I capping? Oh, I'm like. I need to go, dude. I thought I saw Reuniclus for a second. I'm not gonna cap. Okay. Um, what else do we have? What else do we have? <sighs> we'll leave that guy for a little bit. 
I need, I want to talk about him a lot. For Rafa Rig, I think it's fallen off a lot. Um, there's a lot of better Trick Room setters. I'm not going to tear it for now. I'm sure it'll come back and be like, all right. But for now, it's like not that good. Gardevoir is a solid B tier Pokemon. But like low B tier. You know, it's good offensive stats. You know, good dual stab. I can just hit the metagame hard. Right? It's not the most bulky of Pokemon. But it's just going to it's going to hit stuff decently hard. Like you're just going to be doing good damage with it. And I think there was a Gardevoir in top four. No, here's a Gardevoir. So, like, this is a prime example. You can use Secure Train with it. Gardevoir also. Here we go. Fifth place. This is more hyper offensive team with Gardevoir. I think that did really, that did really well. Arash Amadi. Is that? I want to say that is, um, yeah, okay. Me and VGC. Right. So, that is, um, whatchamacallit. That's the 2012 World Champion. No, 2013 World Champion. Um,. Yeah, like, Gardevoir is just meant for more, like, semi-hyper-offensive teams, but I think it does fit well. You're not going to be one-shotting anything, but you're going to be doing, like, really... You're going to have, like, really good damage output, and your, your dual stab hits a lot of the stuff in the metagame, either neutral or you hit stuff for super effective. So, I think it's, like, generally just a good, more hyper-offensive Pokemon. You can also run Trick Room in Prison. You can run, like, dual stab Trick Room in Prison if you wanted to. That could be a good set. Um, Gengar. Uh, Gengar I'm going to put in, like... I'm gonna put Gengar in B tier, um, specifically just because like it's really good on hyper offense teams. So if you see teams like Fade Compass team that he won the Limitless Tour with, like the Gengar Golden Go Talonflame Hydreigon team or whatever the hell that was with Celeridge, Celeridge or whatever the how how you pronounce that guy. Like that team is good. I think Gengar fits on that team well because not a lot of Pokemon get Icy Wind and Icy Wind can be extremely annoying to deal with, specifically when speed control is a main is a main. Speed control is necessary in this game. In a, in a lot of other formats, like 2017, for example, 2017, speed control was not necessary. You could run a team without speed control. But now, it feels like if you're not using balance, you have to be using talent. Or even a lot of balance teams are now opting for talent. It just seems a lot more necessary now than it was before. So having the ability to like, okay, you can talent, but then you can also icy win, which means when you bring in your golden go, it actually outspeeds the guard shop now. Or when you bring in your golden go, it outspeeds the opposing golden go, or you don't have to do a speed tie. It's like, it saves you interactions like those. And I think Gengar can hold its own niche. Also, good dual stab that hits hard, kind of like Gardevoir. But while Gengar, um, you have Icy Wind, Gardevoir, you have Trick Room in Prison. I th uh, Gengar might also get Trick Room in Prison, I'm not so sure. Um, what else? I will cover Don Bozo, don't worry. Um, mm, yeah, Mousehold. Mousehold, I'm gonna put, like... Mm, I'm gonna put it above Gengar. I, okay, here's here's gonna be the tier list. I think I'm gonna put Rotom here, Gengar there. So right, yeah, this, mm, I don't know how I feel about this, but yeah, I like Mousehold. I think Mousehold's good. I just don't think it's super consistent, but when it works, it works. Another another follow me user, but it can deal a lot of damage. So, like Mousehold has the potential. If you just lead wrong, you will get one shot <laughs> by this thing. Um, and a lot of people actually are using Mousehold. Maybe that will influence my uh, opinion here. Maybe I do want to put Mousehold higher. Maybe I want to, like... You know what? I will put Mousehold in lower A tier, specifically for the reason that it's a follow me user that also can just one-shot. If you lead Ron into it, you're getting one-shot. Uh, the only issue is, if you lead Mousehold incorrectly into, like, a Golden Go, it's really bad, because then you're you're forced to either A switch out, take a shit ton of damage, or kind of sack your Mousehold. Because you can't really touch it. So, Mousehold's one of those Pokemon where you need either to A... It's mostly good on lead. I think it's really good on lead. Um, but if you bring it in the back, you just need to make sure that you can get damage off. Um, it's a really good read. It's it's a good redirector. It's actually surprisingly tanky with frame guard and whatnot. Um, but I think it like it's not top top tier because there are a lot of Pokemon that resist it. Or if you just lead wrong, a um, mousehold can actually cause you just a lot of. Tr not it can cause the person using mouse hold a lot of trouble to try to recover from that bad position um holy shit you know still actually a few months to go through um i'm not going to talk about this guy a whole whole lot but golden ghost s tier golden go is the premier offensive pokemon to be paired with tailwind it, it hits stuff so hard if you resist you're taking like 40 percent um 
It's the reason why a lot of Pokemon have Terra types that are like Terra Steel and Terra Fire specifically so you can take resisted damage from Golden Go because it's crucial. Because if not, you set up a Tim and you just Terra Steel, you Terra Steel, Choice Specs, Golden Go, and you just one shot everything that's not resisted. So, like, there's a reason why Golden Go is really good. Um, I think Golden Go will still continue to be really good, but like, it's definitely more counterable now than it was a while back ago. Also, Palmon is really interesting. Oh, because you can bring back the fucking Dunda. That's so fucking annoying. Oh my god. <laughs> I know. I don't want to deal with that shit. Hell no. Please, no one use that team. Fuck no. Um, but like, yeah, Golden Go is really good in that aspect. So I, I do like Golden Go there. I'm not going to talk too much because I don't have too much. It just like hits everything in the metagame. And it has such a hold on the metagame that it forces the metagame to actually use um, defensive terrace against it. That's why like those terrace are so popular. Because if not, you have a Hydreigon that has a terra that doesn't resist golden go you're getting one shot that's why i had to run terra steel terra fire so you can resist it and then go back okay and golden go is just like one of the premier threats in the format um Gar garganical garganical is a tier for me um i've never had an issue with facing garganical because i just have pure offense against it so, mm, is it a tier? It's hard to say. Because it kind of fell off in this one. I don't think many people used it. I'm not going to lie. Okay, second place used Garganicol. But then, okay, it's here. Wait, did pass here? And then, no, uh, they used different teams. Um, it, it, You see it a couple of times. Like, it, it was used here. But it's one of those Pokemon where it's like, it's... It's good, and if you get the ball rolling, it's extremely good, and you just can't stop it. However, there are a lot, a lot of ways to counter it. It's Terra can, excuse me, it's Terra can make up for like those defensive weaknesses or with, with those weaknesses and make it really defensive. Um, but it's one of those Pokemon where you need to support it right, and you need to kind of bring it into an end game position. And if your opponent can avoid that, then it's it's not too good but i think it's one of those pokemon where you get the ball rolling you get in the right position this thing just can't be stopped and you're like fuck i'm screwed against it so i'll give it the, i'll give it the a tier slot for that i mean and salt gear is actually a really good move because like normally body press pokemon like fairy thorn they just have body press or like leech seed but salt gear is just like a consistent damage output move and if you have like a water i think it's like a water or flying type pokemon that's even more damage per turn so i think like it can actually also deal quite a bit of dot like damage over time you know i think it's decent uh what else kill watch rail i'm just gonna put in like i'll, I'll put him in b tier uh, i don't think you should use kill watch rail um that often but I also did face like a couple kilowatt rails, so I can definitely see it's niche. Um, I swear people used it. I'm gonna put it in low B tier because like it, it does have a niche. I'll give it that. Like here we go, generic name use kilowatt rail. It has a niche, but I don't often think you should use it over the other Tailwind Pokemon. But I'll still give it the B ranking because like you can go for. Oh. You have access to like electro type moves and wind power is kind of neat, so it has it has its niche. I'll give it that, right? Well, the Pokemon. Okay, King Ambit. I'm gonna put an A tier. I'm gonna put King Ambit in like. Actually, I'm gonna put King Ambit here. Um, King Ambit is just like one of those Pokemon where it's so bulky, and it's really good on balance teams because balance teams are very good at like chipping you down over time they're not going to pick up straight knockouts but they're going to chip you down over time and whittle away, whittle away your resources and for hyper offensive teams that's a big problem because that means okay your pokemon get chipped down then late game when you send out your pokemon at like 50 percent health and then they have a king ambit in and you are like choice locked or whatever and they just suck your punch you just drop king ambit also is really good defensive typing um that can be really supported by uh, balance type teams because you can have like something like okay if you're weak to fighting well you can tear a fairy okay are you weak to ground well you have amoongus and i mean like you're not redirecting earthquakes but you could spore all right well you also have rotom wash so you're immune to ground like king nambit on balance is so so good now is it because that i lost to nails uh yes and he just he just used king nambit so well and he really just chipped down my team and once my team was tipped down 
and I, I came back in to kill the Kanibit, he just sucker punched and I died. So I think Kanibit is like going to be really good on balance and it's going to be incredibly hard to stop if played well. I think a well played Kanibit on balance teams is very scary and it's going to be very hard to stop. So I think that's going to be one of the premier Pokemon for balance teams if you play very well. If you play Kanibit poorly, obviously not going to go well, right? Um, but I think Kanibit like positioned well in balance. Oh my god, it's going to be so good. Oh, uh, who else do we have? Who else? We have... Not too many good Pokemon. No, Meowth Garda is, like... We're, we're nearing the end of, like, the viable list. I'm gonna put Meowth Garda in, like... I'm gonna put Meowth Garda, like, right below Chomp. I mean, it could be, at, like, above or below Chomp. Like, like I said, this tier list isn't, like, exactly in order. But I think Meowth Garda is, like, right up there. Like, one of the best Sash Pokemon. Flabber Trick is still incredibly broken because you're just hitting everything so hard. And the ability Protein, Protean, even though, like, yeah, you can't use it every turn now, you can get, like, Stab Knockoff. Changing your typing means, like, if your opponent hits you, if you like, let's say Arcanine wants to go for, like, a Flare Blitz into Meowth Garda, right? And you have a Sash. But you're faster and you decide to go for a knockoff. Well, then you're now dark type and Flabbits does 78%, and now you can have an extra turn. Like, the ability is pretty good at making so that you don't maybe die to something. Um, also, Focus Sash is just really good in general, just because, like, you you don't die to hits. Like, it's just a premier offensive Pokemon, obviously, Flower Chick, um, critting stuff. It, I mean, it can't hit Pokemon like Hydreigon super well, but, like, you're hitting a lot of the metagame for good damage, um, and the ability to have Sash is just incredible on a Pokemon that can crit. Um, because it's kind of like it's kind of like an Urshifu, but like a worse Urshifu, just offensive typing wise. But you still have the ability to just like your opponent leads Arcanine. You don't care. You can. I don't know. Knock off still is going to do a little bit. Okay, then you live the hit. The next turn you can Flower Trick something like, and then avoid avoid the crit. Or you just crit to do a lot of damage. Because like you crit the guard jump, you're doing like 70-80%. You crit the NDD, you're doing a lot of damage. Like it's just it's a really good offensive Pokemon. And not to mention, obviously it's, uh, Meowth Guard is really good on uh Trick Room. Excuse me, Meowth Guard is really good on tail Tailwind teams. But Meowth Guard also gets Trick Room. So what I discovered and I lost to the strategy, and now now I'm obviously like better prepared for it, but like your opponent can lead like a golden go um Meow Scarda, go like make it rain and trick them. You KO the Golden Go, they bring now like a slower Pokemon. And you're like, fuck, I'm screwed because I just set up Tail. I'm kind of assuming that I can just power through. So Meow Scarda is actually a, a pretty decent trick em setter because it can get all sort of reliably. Um, and if you don't expect it to use trick room, it can kind of suck because you want to set up Tail versus Meow Scarda at outspeed. And then they set up trick room, so they're going to be always faster. Um, and they can bring like a solar Pokemon, like a Moongus or something, and just kind of ruin up your day. So I think Meowth Scarda definitely has potential. I don't know exactly what moves it runs for coverage, um, but it's really good. Um, what else do we have? Oh, that's Shiny Glalie. They put Shiny Glalie in instead of regular. Alright, we don't have too many like good, good Pokemon to go through still. Um, Titar. I'm going to put Titar on the bottom of B. Um, you don't really see much Tyranitar. Um, actually, you don't see Tyranitar at all. Except on Danielle's team. But I think Tyranitar is a very good defensive Pokemon. Um, yeah, I mean, you're taking a lot of damage from ground and steel type moves. But you can take hits from Golden Go. And you can take hits from Hydreigon. You can take hits from Garchomp. And you can, it gets a lot of good coverage. You can run Ice Punch if you want to knock out Garchomp. You can knock out Hydreigon. It's, another, it's a good Torkoal check. Um, if a team struggles with Trick Room, you could just slap it on, excuse me, you could slap it on Tyranitar, and then you'll be able to better deal with Trick Room then. It's like, it's not a really, really good Pokemon, but it, it just like, in those specific instances where you want like a, not a counter, but like a check to something like a Torkoal, a Dragon, um, there's Tyranitar. And it also just fits on like more balanced centric teams, and I, I like it as a more supportive Pokemon where you have more offensive Pokemon, but you can also fall back on Tyranitar if you need to in like the Trick Room matchup. Um, mm, we actually still have a decent amount of Pokemon to go through. Holy shit, Hariyama! I think Hariyama is like mm, not put him in B. I think Hariyama is good. You, you get access to Fake Out. You have Flame Orb, so you can use Close Combat Facade. That's gonna do a shit ton of damage. You get access to Wide Guard, so you can lead like Trick Room Setter, 
plus golden or trick consider plus hariyama and if they leave golden go you can just wide guard so you're not gonna be affected by make it rain uh, you won't be affected by rock side if you're scared of your trick consider being flinched um and hariyama also covers rhetorical really well because like i mentioned earlier tarantar is a good counter rhetorical but if they bring hariyama then you're kind of fucked um hariyama is also just like you set up trick room Hariyama then becomes like a really offensive threat because the combination of eruption plus close combat not many pokemon are taking so i think it's it's niche, but I still think you can definitely be good. Um, wait, some of these Pokemon are shiny for some reason. Um, nothing good there. Bronze sounds interesting. I might cover him in a future video, but for right now, he's not too relevant. Arcanine's pretty good. We'll talk about Arcanine and Palathin. Um, Palma getting first place at this tournament is worth noting. Um, but that's for the revival resting so you can revive the Don Dondozo and also there's Meowskarta. You can set the Trick Room so you have two Trick Room setters and got to tell Meowskarta. Um, cover Palma. So Titan, like, because it's not extremely relevant in the meta, I'm not going to cover it. Tauros, I kind of already covered Tauros. Skeleturge, I'm actually going to cover right now. Skeleturge, I think, is like low A tier. I don't think it's the best Pokemon, but it's like one of those really nice. It's one of those Pokemon where, like, it's always good on a lead because. So what Skeletor is really good at doing is just slowing down the pace of the game. It's not going to pick up like one hit knockouts. It's not going to do any of that shit. But what it does is just it enables you to really slow down the pace of the game to how you want to play it. Because you're not going to be picking up a one hit knockout onto Skeletor. Because you always run a defensive um, terror typing that covers for its weaknesses. So you're never going to be really picking up the one hit knockout. And it actually is like Fire Dark. Fire Ghost is an extremely good offensive typing. So upon lead, you have access to a really good defensive Pokemon once you Terra, and you have access to a pretty good like dual stab, I would say. So you can use you can use like the Fire Ghost dual stab to just hit a lot of the things in the mega game. Like, okay, they lead Golden Go, alright, well you just like fire stab it, alright. Um I'm kind of blanking on examples, but the Fire Ghost just hits a lot of the meta for like a good amount of damage, right? Um, not many things resist it, and you have like stuff like Hydro Hydreigon and Garchomp, but you can like, I don't know, you can Terra Fairy, Terra Blast if you want, I don't, I don't know. Terra Fairy is actually used on a uh, Skeledirge, but like, those are a couple of examples of like how it could be used. I just think overall it's one of those Pokemon where I might not bring it in the back, I might just lead it, but it's very good at just slowing down the pace of the game, and I like that. Or you could even bring it in the back. If you want just want to slow down the pace of the game mid game but i think it's more of effective as a lead pokemon i've seen people have more success with it against me when they just lead it rather than have it in the back just because it allows them to slow down the pace of the game allows them to slow down my hyper offense a bit um and just kind of have them kind of control the pace of the game rather than me control the pace of the game i think that's what skeletors is really good at um other pokemon here okay none of these pokemon these bottom oh tinkaton i'm actually going to mention tinkaton I'm gonna put Tinkaton in like C tier. It gets a knockoff, which is actually pretty good because you can knock off like choice specs. It does get access to fake out. It's one of the few Pokemon that gets access to fake out, which I forget. Um and it gets Gigaton Hammer. And Gigaton Hammer, yeah, you can't use it every turn, but like 160 base power is still a decent amount of damage. So you're still checking things a lot, right? Uh with Gigaton Hammer. So I, I think it's worth. I think it's worth using. Um it's just like cause it, it did decently well here. Where is uh Tinkaton? I know I got like a decent placement here. Uh, unless I'm capping, but I don't think I am. Here we go. 20 second. 81. Which, that's good. Who is this Andy guy? I literally have no idea who he is. No idea who this guy is. I'm not going to cap. Anyways. Um, yeah, I think it sounds pretty good. I think I also saw another top 32 placing. Or top cut placing, if I'm not mistaken. Um... No, nah, it might have been the only one. I think I think it can be decent. I'm not gonna say it's gonna be great, but I think it can carve a niche on some teams. All right, then we have um what else? Tessigiri, which we'll talk about with Don Bozo, Arcanine. Overall, Arcanine. I think Arcanine has definitely fallen off in popularity because a balanced teams are on the decline. But I will still put Arcanine in like low A tier because about a good balanced team. If supported right with Arcanine can still be very annoying. And I think Arcanine, like, it's one of those Pokemon where it just it, it allows you to slow down the pace of the game. A lot of hyper offense teams just want to go, 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 but you leave something like Arcanine Amoongus, and you can automatically just control the pace of the game. Like, if your opponent leads, okay, if they lead like Talonflame Golden Go, you lead Arcanine Amoongus, you control the pace of the game because you can protect Amoongus, you can 
Terra Moon gets into water, and then Flare Butts, you can Snarl, you can do whatever you want, right? It really allows you to control the pace of the game um, with Arcanine. You can use will wisp like will wisp is really good in this meta because it's a, there's a decent amount of physical attackers, um, but Intimidate Pokemon aren't as good anymore. So you're not really using Intimidate to use Intimidate anymore, it's more of a secondary bonus, but Arcanine uses, in, like Arcanine utilizes still well, but you can also roll with stuff like uh, Garchomp or whatnot. Um, before they set up a sword stance to be able to eat his but you can uh, will with Gyarados uh, before it sets up It still has access to will it has access to all the same stuff it did in the past And for that reason it stays in a tier as just a really good overall balance type Pokemon um, That can slow down on you that can control the pace of the game. I Love this ad so much. It's funny um, What else do we need? All right Arcanine covered Palafin I'll put Palafin in B tier yeah. I mean, Pelipper Palafin has been something where, like, we've, we've seen a bit throughout this tournament, like, Pelipper Palafin has actually been pretty good, so, I can definitely see Pelipper, I can see Pelipper Palafin uh, being on the rise, just because Palafin just hits so incredibly hard, obviously, like, normally, but, like, if you have the rain up, and then, then have uh, Palafin, you're just, like, you, you're destroying, you're, like, literally destroying everything, so, I think... You know what? There's really good arguments to be made for that. So, I think uh, Palafin, like, because we're seeing the rise of Pelipper, I think Palafin is like right there with it because you just you, you can just like one shot a lot of shit uh, with Palafin. Um, what else do we have? I think those are about all the meta relevant Pokemon, excluding the Dondozo, if I remember correctly. Um, I think because like you're not gonna use. Yeah, it's just Tessigur and Donzu. I mean, you can use Baxcalibur, but it's not, like, meta-reliant. I don't think any of these other Pokemon are, like, super meta to the point where, like, I feel like I need to cover them in terms of, like, how to deal with them or, like, their relevance. Just a lot of these Pokemon, like, they're fine. They're just, like, not... They're not meta right now. And I think at some point, some of these Pokemon, like you pointed out, Muscle could definitely have a niche. Um, I mean, Serena definitely could have a niche. Um, Bronzone definitely could. Uh, what else? I don't know. But, like, yeah, nothing else really sticks out to me right now. I could be forgetting them on if I do, just let me know. But, like, I think this is pretty much it. Other things we got to cover are the Tetsugiri and Dondonzo. Tetsugiri and Dondonzo go hand in hand. Um, Dondonzo is extremely annoying. Um, Dondonzo, I'm going to put an S tier. And Tetsugiri, I'm going to put an S tier. Dondonzo, a Tetsugiri is, like, one of those, like, strats that I just think is so, so incredibly annoying and just hard to deal with. Because, like... You have to put in so many resources to deal with the Donzo Tetsugiri. So once you finally deal with the Donzo, you know, and get it down to the right health, it might just decide to rest and then it has access to sleep talk. And then you're like, fuck, I have to deal with this Pokemon all over again. And then once you finally KO, KO the Donzo, there's a Scarf Tetsugiri that's waiting there to just pick off everything. Because it, I'm just going to assume in order for a person to deal with the Donzo that you're wasting a lot of resources and you know let's say your Pokemon get chipped down to 40% but you gave the Donzo so you think you're pretty good you know you think you're pretty set and then they have a choice craft Tessigiri that outspeeds the rest of your team and can pick everything off with like a muddy water and that's the annoying part with it that Tessigiri actually can be really good with a choice scarf after the Donzo's KO if that wasn't the case I don't think it would be as annoying um but there are many there are many times when a person can like I can deal with the Donzo. Excuse me, Dombozo. I can deal with Dombozo just fine. But is dealing with Dombozo and then Tetsugiri afterwards. That's the issue. I kind of wish um, Tetsugiri, like, they gave it much worse stats. And just that, like, commander thing is, like, it's just purpose. Because having the stats that it does have actually makes it a decent offensive threat afterwards. So, like, the strategy is just so good because you. It's kind of like Xerneas and Cinnabar, where, like, Mm, not serious. Yeah, no, it's like Shin Ninja where like when you go into a team preview and you see Shin Ninja your entire strategy Revolves around okay. What is my end game like versus Shin Ninja? And that's what the Donzo Dombozo is you're like, okay What's my end game versus Dom Dombozo? It's just like such a controlling archetype where like it just really Restricts what you can bring what you can use late game to deal with it And even if you can potentially deal with it, it can just rest sleep talk Oh, you want to hit with a super effective move? Am I Terry? Am I Terra grass? Am I Terra water? Am I Terra steel? Can you even spore me safely? Can you even clear smog me? Okay, if you do that's okay, but I've rest like or well, I guess I'd be asleep for that But like I have sleep talk <sighs> it, 
And then it's like, okay, well, after you're done dealing with me, you have Tetsugiri. And then a lot of these teams are hyper offensive. So they're just going to leave something like a Talon Flame and Golden Go. So you're already going to have a lot of Pokemon there chipped down with just dealing go with Golden Go. And then in the back, they'll just have Dombozo, Tetsugiri, where they'll just be able to pick you off. As well as Pokemon, like I said, it just controls what you bring. It's really restricting on what you bring and how you play the game. I think it's very, very annoying. Like, you don't see an Arcanine and you don't mean to go, oh, fuck, my, my entire game. I need to make sure my end game is all about focusing down on Arcanine. No. You don't think that. You don't even think that for hey, Golden Go to a certain extent, yes, but you don't even think that for Hydreigon. But Don Do Don Bozo is like something you need need to prepare for. Um Yeah, honestly, I don't think there's too much else I want to talk about in terms of like Pokemon that are like decently relevant. Like sure, you could use squawk ability, but are you gonna win with it? Mm, maybe not. <laughs> maybe not. Um in terms of like yeah, I think that's basically about it. Like, all the Pokemon I can think of right now that are, like, decently relevant. And you could say, yeah, like, I've heard, like, someone use Glade. I've heard people using, um, Umbreon. Actually, I faced an Umbreon. But, like, just because I faced this Pokemon doesn't mean I'm going to put it on here. Because I think everything on here has to be meta-relevant or rogue to a certain extent. And these Pokemon here are more so, like, the Scizor, Flamigo, Breloom, Salmons are more, like, my own kind of calls. Maybe, I think, I think... Actually, Scizor's actually gonna fall. Actually, I'm gonna untier Scizor. I don't think Scizor's good. But I think Breloom could have a decent place in the game. And so I think could Flamigo. But like, Spence already has a decent place. Lilligan can maybe find his place in lower, like, lower ranks just because you can just spam after you eruption at Terra Fire. Rotom, actually, I'm just gonna not use Rotom just because I don't think Rotom's relevant. But this is a tier list of like Pokemon that I think are generally pretty good. Um. Yeah. I, I don't know how I would change this around. I think this is, like, generally kind of my thoughts are for, like, the current state of the metagame. And I'm sure, like, as it goes, as the metagame progresses, obviously more things will, I think more hyper-offensive Pokemon will fall out of fashion. But for now, I think this is generally the, um, I would say this is definitively the best tier list because I also, like, don't really know what the fuck I'm talking about. But, like, I, I think overall this is, like, pretty good for a tier list in terms of just, like, accurately analyzing every Pokemon, their strengths and weaknesses, and kind of where they fit into the meta. Um, yeah. Man, that took a fuck. That took really, really long. Oh my god. I, I don't know. It didn't take as long as my other like um tier list shit, but like that definitely took a little bit longer than I expected. I know my one tier list that I did was like an hour and forty minutes. And I don't really want to do that again. So I'm probably just gonna end it off here. If you did, smash that like button and subscribe. Right, roommate? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Smash the like button and subscribe. I'll have more VGC content coming your way. Anyways, I'm ever good late. Peace out.